Hello everyone. Today we are going to reflect and explore the class 12 text on the face of it by Susan Hill. Susan Hill is an author of fiction and non-fiction works. Her novels include The Woman in Black, The Mist in the Mirror, and I Am the King of the Castle. She received the Somerset Mom Award in 1971 for her novel, I Am the King of the Castle. She was appointed Commander of the Order of the British Empire in the 2012 birthday. Honours for her service to literature, she is known to explore the inner fears and loneliness. Her works reflect honest suffering and optimism. So with, before we begin with the text, I would like to ask you a few questions. What is your take on life? What you see on the slide is a glass full. Is it? Is it a glass full? Or is it half a glass full or half a glass empty? What is your perspective in life? Are you an optimist who sees a glass full? Or are you a pessimist who always say that half of my glass is empty? A glass containing water to the halfway point is often used to point out the difference between optimists and pessimists. The optimist sees the glass as half full. She focuses on what is there. So much that can be done with half a glass of water. The pessimist, on the other hand, sees the glass as half empty. He sees that the glass used to be full and now half of its contents are gone. And soon, unfortunately, it will be empty. Optimists will say the glass is half full, whereas pessimists will point out its emptiness. So what are you? Are you a glass half full or glass half empty type of a person? Do you tend to see the positive even in the most stressful situations? Or do you immediately assume the worst and focus on the negative? Well, people generally fall into two categories when it comes to how we see the world. And if you are a pessimist, those who have negative thoughts, it could be affecting your health and even longevity. Being optimistic doesn't mean that you ignore the stress in your life. It simply means you've developed coping mechanisms that allow you to deal with the emotions in a more productive way. It also allows you to reduce the feelings of sadness, depression, anxiety, helps you develop strong relationships with others, reduces the effects of stress on the body and improves mental and emotional health. And also, the bonus is your immune system. Experts say that the real difference between optimists and pessimists isn't in how happy they are with their lives or how they see situations that occur around them. It is in how they cope with stress and events. So if you are someone who tends to be pessimistic, it's worth the effort to refrain your brain to react differently. We all face obstacles. However, how we respond to those obstacles can make all the difference in the world. One tends to see obstacles as opportunities. As a result, people who expect good things to happen will take actions that lead to positive results. Now let's look at some of the facts of the text. We're going to be talking about the historical context of the text. On the face of it is probably set in rural England sometime around the time of its writing, that is 1975. The only specific historical event mentioned in the play is the World War. The World War II, during which Mr. Lamb had his leg blown off by a bomb. People who suffer from disabilities must always look at the bright side of things 
and adapt the reality of life bravely. At the same time, the actual pain or inconvenience caused by a physical impairment is often much, much less than the sense of alienation felt by the person. The disabled need support. More importantly, they need acceptance and not our pity. The title on the face of it is used to mean that something seems to be good, true, but that needs to be changed when you know more about it. Appearances are deceptive and most often we go on dealing with impressions and prejudices about others without caring to know about them actually. Like in this instance, people know Mr. Lamb as a lonely, eccentric, lame old man. But in reality, he is a very kind, compassionate, generous man who longs for the company and he loves his fellow human beings along with all the other creations of God. Similarly, Derek appears to be a boy with a huge scar on his face, whom no one loves or likes or befriends. He is the object of other people's hateful stares, ridicule and neglect. Even his mother does not dare to kiss him on the cheek with the scar. Yet this boy who is suffering from an acute inferiority complex has a tender and sensitive heart. He wants to love and he wants to be loved. Fortunately for him, he meets Mr. Lamb who transforms him with his healing touch. Children, we'll move on to the characters now and we'll first speak of Mr. Lamb through the web chart. One of the plays central characters, Mr. Lamb, a philanthropist, is an old man and a veteran of World War II. In the war, he lost one of his legs and now he has a tin leg. Lamb owns a big house and garden and though he lives alone, he keeps himself busy, growing crab apples, keeping bees, reading and making toffee and jelly. He's a wise and contemplative soul who enjoys observing, listening to and learning from other people and the natural world. He truly believed in turning a deaf ear to the unpalatable comments. A staunch believer that inherent goodness surpasses differences that are superficial and unimportant. Optimism and positivity were a key to his meaningful existence. He is frank, non-judgmental, asks probing questions which forces Derry to probe within, look deeper. In his conversation with Derry, he expresses a philosophy of openness and honest connection and his kindness and sense of dignity inherent in all people, eventually help him break through the boy's very tough, defiant exterior. In keeping with this mindset of openness, Lamb has no curtains on his open windows because he likes to see the light and dark for what it is and to hear the weather outside. He also leaves his garden gate open and states that all are welcome in his garden and home. Mr. Lamb says that he has hundreds of friends and that people like to come and go in his home. But it's a little unclear if this is true or not. Mr. Lamb's observation that everything's the same but everything is different means that underneath the scars, the handicaps, people have the same feelings and desires and aspirations and longings. The sameness, though, does not prevent people from being unique individuals. Derry suspects that Mr. Lamb 
is in fact lonely and unhappy and that no one actually comes to visit him. Lamb does admit that the neighborhood children call him Lamey Lamb because of his leg. But he says that this doesn't bother him at all. At the end of the play, Mr. Lamb falls from his ladder while picking apples. And though it's left unclear, it's suggested that the fall kills him. Alright, we move on to Derry now. The other protagonist of the text, Derry, whose full name is actually Derek, is a boy of 14 with a badly burnt face sinking in the abyss of despair and frustration. He would have doomed himself in mental desolation had Mr. Lamb's optimism did not empower him. Of the accident that left him scarred, all he says is, I got acid all down that side of my face and it burned it all way. It ate my face up. Because of this, people treat him differently. He complains that others fear and pity him and usually actively avoid him. This led Derry to isolate himself and create a tough, reserved exterior. He wants to avoid being hurt and so he avoids everyone he can. And when he does interact with people, he's both wary and angrily defiant. He also has internalized the way others see him and seems to consider himself monstrous because of his disability. He assumes that the world is a harsh and alienating place and acts accordingly. For example, climbing over Mr. Lamb's garden wall instead of checking the gate which is always left open. At first, Derry assumes that Mr. Lamb will treat him like other people do. But he's soon intrigued by the old man's peculiar questions and open nature, suggesting that Derry does in fact long for human connection, even as he fears the potential pain of being rejected. This is further confirmed when Derry runs away from his mother, who, it is suggested, treats him with dehumanizing kind of pity. To go back to Mr. Lamb's garden where he just wants to sit and talk with the old man. He learns to not complain. Instead, realize the immense beauty in the world that has to be explored and appreciated. We move on to Derry's mother. Derry's mother is given little characterization in the play, but she seems simultaneously overprotective and not understanding of her son. She contributes to his isolation by keeping him home because of his facial injury and treats him with a sense of pity that robs him of his dignity essentially treating him like a perpetually helpless victim. In the play, Derry's mother forbids him from returning to Mr. Lamb's house. But Derry leaves anyway, finally asserting himself in a positive way. Now that we've done the web charts, can we quickly look at some of the MCQs and see whether we know the answer to it or not? Okay, let's start. So what were Derry and Mr. Lamb victims of? Were they victims of emotional trauma, physical impairment or war? The answer to that is physical impairment. The next question. How did Derry enter the garden? Did he enter through the main gate or by climbing the garden wall or through the alley? So what did he do? He climbed the garden wall. Derry's mother stopped him from going back to Mr. Lamb because she feared he'll be hurt, Mr. Lamb was a stranger or he will not come back. 
the first one that she feared he'll be hurt. Is it the first one or is it both A and B? Yes, it is both A and B. All right, now we'll move on to the next slide, which is when I'm going to be talking about the various symbols that have been used in the text. Yeah, we will first start with the symbol of weeds. The majority of the play takes place in Mr. Lamb's garden. And at one point, the old man directs Derry's attention to a certain part of the garden near the far wall. What can you see? He asks. And the boy responds, rubbish. And then, just green and stuff, weeds. Mr. Lamb then points out that there is only an arbitrary distinction between what is considered a flower and what is considered a weed. Lamb says, it's all life growing, same as you and me. Weeds therefore act as a symbol of perspective and perception, particularly regarding the disabilities faced by both Derry and Mr. Lamb. What do I mean by disabilities? Derry's burnt face and Mr. Lamb's amputated leg. A plant can be seen as a flower, something positive and desirable, or as a weed, something negative and undesirable, just like a disability can. The plant or the person with disability itself does not change. But when society's perspective of it changes, it can go from being something rejected and avoided to something cultivated and admired. And while the plant obviously cannot change its perception of itself, humans can. And in this brief exchange about weeds, Mr. Lamb suggests that Derry could do so. He cannot change society's perspective, whether others treat him like a flower or a weed, but he can change the way he thinks about himself. Instead of feeling ashamed and angry, he can recognize that like all other people, he's also just life, growing and valuable in his own way. Very much like a garden of life, all encompassing. It takes all kinds to make this world, doesn't it? Mr. Lamb means to say that different people have different viewpoints to look at the same thing. He tries to explain the difference of perspective by citing the example of bees. He says, to some, the sound of bees seems to be humming, whereas to some, it is buzzing. Derry tells Mr. Lamb that he has been told all the fairy stories, but all that is useless to him. To Mr. Lamb, bees sing. They don't make a noise. Life treats us the way we take it. Music and noise, they both coexist. It depends on what we choose. Moving on to the another symbol, which is the beauty and the beast. It is our perspective that decides how and what we perceive. It is dependent on our outlook and attitude. Some find one thing beautiful, the same thing can be found ugly by the others. It all depends on one's outlook and attitude. It is therefore important to adopt a positive attitude to everything in life, just like the princess. You know, it is also like the wolf you wish to feed within. What you feed is what you let dominate. So children, you'd agree with me when I say that the text teaches you it teaches you some life lessons to not succumb to your own fears, apprehensions, 
but to get the better of them and finally emerge a winner. More MCQs come your way. Mr. Lamb kept the door of his garden open to get fresh air, to let people walk in as they pleased or to avoid getting up repeatedly. You're right, the answer is to let people walk in as they pleased. The second one, what draws Derry towards Mr. Lamb? His positive attitude, his perspective to life, his garden. So which one do you think is the right one? Yes, you're right. A and B, the second choice. Derry was startled on entering the garden because he expected no one. Mr. Lamb was scary or it was haunted. The answer is that he expected no one to be there. I do hope, children, that you'll continue to explore the text further. It is very important to understand what is between the lines for you to be able to understand. And you know, English texts, they teach you life lessons. In the next session, I'll discuss the various themes of the texts. Thank you for listening.